So Wales are through to the last 16. Um, brilliant in the end. Um, I said earlier on that they held on for a draw because it sort of felt like that, but they didn't. They lost the game, obviously. Went through in goal difference. Um, had a player sent off, Ethan Ampadu, which um, a lot of people saying a bit harsh, that one. So mm. I'll get your thoughts on that, guys, in a second because he did sort of clash on his um, ankle, didn't he? But overall, really, I mean, massive congratulations. Wales of the first team in terms of the home nations to qualify, go through to the next stage. Um, Drew earlier on, the first game of Switzerland won all. Uh, beat Turkey, the so-called dark horses of the tournament. That was a 2-0 win. Great performance from them. And then yesterday against Italy, I mean, Gareth Bell had that opportunity, didn't he? Yeah, yeah um, great chance. Where he could have, it just sort of skied it over, but could have equalised. And that was when they were already down to 10 men. So, I, look, I thought it was a brilliant display from them all in all. Not to, um, not to get absolutely pumped at that stage by a team that we know are doing really well in the tournament. So, finished second in the end on goal difference. Just bettered Switzerland into the last six. They're going to face the runners-up in Group B, which will be one of Denmark, Finland or Russia. Let's talk to Dean Saunders because he's been out in Baku. He's been covering Wales. Um, let's see how he thought that performance went. Good morning, Dean. Morning, Laura. Morning, lads. Morning, morning Dino. Morning, hey, Dino, we should also say, is it your birthday today? Yeah, it is. <gasps> how do you know that? Oh, happy happy birthday. birthday. Well, i just been doing my research on you, haven't I? <laughs> how you, can, I can I ask how old you are? 57. I had to check my passport this morning. I think there's been some kind of mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Massive happy birthday to you. You don't look a day over 40, uh, I have to say. Um, and what a thanks, birthday Laura. present. You guys have qualified. You're into the knockout stages once again. What's the general yeah. feeling? Well, I'm just, just amazing, really, because uh, being honest, I looked at our squad and I looked at the group and I thought, well, we're going to struggle to get through there. But We've managed to do it. I mean, the first game against Switzerland, we got through on spirit. We were 1-0 down, a bit lucky. They deserved to win the game, but we, we got back in the game through through everyone just sticking together. We didn't see Ramsey and Bale. Uh, James played really well, Dan James. But we didn't see Ramsey and Bale, and then we were hoping that they had a game under their belt and we could they could you know light the stadium up in the second game, which they did. We got through the second game against Turkey because we played brilliantly. Ramsey, Bale, James, all of them, but especially them them two. Um, and then the, the, this game, you know, Robert Page, he's, he's preparing for the game and he must be thinking, you know, I've got to, right, Spinozola's going to be going down the left, Insignia's going to be coming inside, Baratti's going to be, if he's playing, or Locatelli's going to be going short. Kalini comes out with the ball and all of a sudden Mancini plays eight different players and we're facing a completely different Italian team. So, all in all, we got through yesterday. And, you know, like you said, Laura, it feels like we got a draw. Yeah. The best part was we kept the score down. Mm. That was that was the object when we had a man off. Can you keep the score down? Because I was getting a bit worried. Switzerland's boring. That's exactly what I was thinking as well, because obviously they were doing the split screen, weren't they, with the other score and then everything that was going on there. I actually thought as well, the changes that you made were quite positive, considering you've got a man sent off, to bring on a striker and actually to say, no, look, we'll, we'll still have a go, I, th I thought was really positive, Dean. Yeah, and he, he hasn't got the luxury of uh, Mancini leaving eight players out. I mean, <laughs> if you, um, I've said this to you before, Laura, the goalkeeper hasn't played a league game for four years, wow. Danny Ward. <laughs> Connor Roberts is playing for Swansea and got left out of the playoff semi-final. Chris Meppham's at Bournemouth. Roden's playing for Spurs reserves, not in the first team. Now and again, he plays. You go further up, Chris, Chris Gunter's playing for Charlton. Morell's playing for Luton reserves. Joel has ruptured his Achilles, hasn't played for a year. Bale's in and out the Spurs team. Aaron Ramsey hasn't played all season. Dan James is out in and out the Man United team. And Kiefer Moore's playing for Cardiff. So mm. we've got into that game yesterday with that group of players, hardly played, all of them, and they made eight changes, and probably all eight, all eight of them players they, that each change would have got in our team, but we managed to get uh, we, um, a narrow defeat out of that with ten men. Yeah, Amazing. Dean, no, I mean, you, you say that, right, and you know you make a great point. Like A lot of these players ain't been playing, and, and probably not 100. So why have they, why, how do they perform so well when they play for Wales? Well, Jamie, somebody asked me yesterday, What you know? someone was saying to me, how come England don't get the same the spirit that Wales seem to have? Well, England have got far better players, obviously. You know, the squad is, I think England have got more or less, them and France have got the best players in the tournament. But if you t if you trace it right back to what's changed with us, we had, we've always had good players and we've never qualified. We kept stumbling 
from tournament to tournament. So John Toshak has said to Brian Flynn, you you take over the under 17s, under 19s, under 21s. And we're going to, what we'll do, we'll give a load of 20-year-olds, we'll try and get them 50 caps before the 25. And we'll have a team under 25 for the future. And they might lose games, but they, but eventually they'll come through together. So the likes of Ramsey, Bale, Joe Ledley, Gabby Don, James Collins, all them players, they're all mates off the pitch. Because Brian Flynn, because he never had uh, obstacles in his way with different managers doing the different teams, he would take the he would take the under 17s and play them in the under 21s, and then John Toshak would take the under 21 group and we we'd play them in they play in the first team, so they they've all come through together. Chris Gunter has got 101 caps and he's only 31, <laughs> so Bale's got 60 odd. You know they they've all got loads and loads of caps and they've all played through together. So off the pitch. Chris Gunter, Ramsey and Bell, the best mates. So there's not that many of us. So we've always we've always got that sort of us against the rest of the world situation. But that's what's happened. That's how we've got that spirit. And they're proud to play for the country. And, it, it, you know, when the manager, every three months, he picks a, a football team with 11 shirts hanging up in the dressing room and there's four million people and you've got one of them shirts, you should be proud to, to play for your country. Out of four million, when you were at school, you never thought you were going to play for your country. So when you become a footballer, you should never take it for granted. You play for your country and it stops one day. You know, you, you end up not playing. So they're all proud to play for the country. We're the underdogs every game. Yes, we're spot on with that, with that sentiment, Dina. I think um, from my point of view, I was just going to ask you what you thought to the, to the five at the back. That was obviously to try and counteract what uh, Italy had. And obviously with all the changes, do you think that's something that they'll look to do going forward or stick to the four? Because some of the boys looked a bit confused with the third man run, I thought. Well, it didn't work, Troy. You know, if, you, if you've been honest, it, was, it wasn't just five at the back. It was 5-5. Five, five. Mm -hmm. You know, we played, with, we played with Aaron Ramsey as the false number nine. Yeah. And if we've learned anything from that game, the, the jigsaw that seems to be coming, to, <clears throat> coming into place with Dan James... Bale and Ramsey sort of combining pace and skill. Mm -hmm. Kiefer Moore, the big striker, Kiefer Moore, who's six foot six, he's a he's a key piece in the jigsaw because otherwise, like yesterday, we've got to play out from the back to get in there off. If you play mm -hmm. with a false snap, so what, are we good enough? Are our defenders good enough to pass through the opposition? Or do we end up passing it back to Danny Ward, who booms it up the pitch, and then it just comes straight back at us again? So Kiefer Moore is like a focal point and he's become vital to the other three lads who are, they end up running towards the opposition's goalkeeper off to get the ball off him instead of getting it off the defenders all the time. So yeah. um, I thought what you said is right. I think we're better with Kiefer Moore in the team. He, you know, to the yesterday, we played better with 10 men when he was on the pitch. Mm. Played better than when we had 11. It's true. Uh, Dina, we're going to let you go because um, it's your birthday. So I imagine the boys around you are going to be spoiling you this morning. If you didn't get breakfast in bed, I'm not, I'm not sure what they're doing. Welsh Dave needs to sort himself out. Um, have a wonderful day. Um, enjoy the sun. Enjoy Revel in the success because this is brilliant. The first home nations to make it through to the knockout stages officially. So uh, congratulations, Dino. Happy birthday. Thanks. We'll speak to you again very soon.